Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to the first episode of In-Depth Outdoors in 2019. I'm your host, James Holst. On today's show, we head to South Wisconsin to go fish with PJ Vic, where we're gonna target a species we've never fished for intentionally here on In-Depth Outdoors, the sauger. Now, the sauger is very similar to a walleye. Uh, a little bit more colorful, doesn't get quite as big, and is known to be very aggressive, which can make it a very fun species to target through the ice. Uh, we're also dealing with some very tough winter conditions this week. Uh, winter is back in a big way, much needed, because we need those cold temperatures. But before those cold temperatures arrive, we're looking at a chance for some incredibly heavy snowfall and maybe even some rain. So that's going to make things out there on the ice today a little bit more difficult than usual. So stick around. It's PJ, Vic, and I here today, southern Wisconsin, targeting saugers on In-Depth Outdoors. <laughs> Out here today on a small river in southern Wisconsin. We're just getting our first iFish Pro set in here. Um, we definitely went further off the beaten path today. Uh, we had probably about a half mile walk to get in here uh, through the canary grass, marsh grass, thicket, woods. Um, and James is just about to get back from his second trip. He's probably really working up a sweat right now. <laughs> but uh, what we have here, we're we uh, have had a really untypically high water year out here in Wisconsin, southern Wisconsin especially. Um, and it's rose these rivers and we're on a small back bay um, that's just adjacent to a deeper wintering hole uh, on this small river. So what we got going on is the fish in peak feeding windows move up and out of them holes onto these shallow flats and, and they're up here hunting. We got river shiners, um, yeah, the, the juvenile panfish, and one of the somewhat strange things that we find in their bellies every once in a while is they're up in these marshes grubbing for frogs, uh, right up in the mud, uh, digging in the cattails. So We're hoping for a good morning. We got a big frontal system coming in here. Um, it's gonna rain, it's gonna snow, uh, and we're hoping the fish really wanna bite out ahead of this. How was that walk, James? It was actually a lot better. <laughs> and uh, my blood was flowing like cookie dough, Christmas yeah. cookie dough there, so I had to burn <laughs> off a few calories. <laughs> the second time through was a lot easier. Oh, good, good. You know, sometimes they're, I, I shouldn't say sometimes, very often we get to live pretty large, running around on the snowmobiles, makes yeah. things easier, but this is kind of fun too. Yeah, this is cool. I mean, it, it kind of adds to the adventure factor, you know, walking. You could hide a pretty good sized deer in there, man. Yeah, that's, that's some good cover. Yeah, it's nice around here. I'm not going to shut the hub up quite yet until the fish tell us where it needs to be. Okay, that sounds perfect to me. How many, uh, you got uh, one, two high fish pros out so far? Yeah, um, and we'll, we'll set the rest in here and get jigging. Sounds good. Okay. Fish on! That looks like a pretty good one. That is a big one. Oh, they yeah. don't pull drag. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get down in here and see if I can't get a jigging wrap in my thumb. Oh well, yeah, huh? nice big saw. Yeah, it is. Beautiful. All right. Ooh, oh, dude, that's a dandy. <laughs> Such a cool fish. <laughs> wow. <laughs> cool. I mean, that, you're looking at a 19, 20 inch sauger there. Yes, indeed. Uh, I don't. 
I don't care where you are, that's, that's a big sauger. <laughs> so a lot of people think of saugers, you know, the little tiny little rats. Uh, some of the rivers, Minnesota, Wisconsin, they actually get really big. Yeah. And this, that's a great specimen. You know, 20 inch sauger, that's a trophy anywhere. Yeah. And uh, if you're not familiar with the sauger, it is the walleye's ornery cousin. It, it really is. <laughs> uh, they're so aggressive. <laughs> they are. <laughs> nice fish, man. Cool. Very cool. All right. Wow. That's, that's a great way to start the day. Very happy with that fish. Off you go. Hi, fish bro. Get him, James. <laughs> Another forward. one. There he is. Well, little guy. I'm king of the little guys, the shrimps. <laughs> that one's up too. We'll try this one. It'll be a 21 incher. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Good one? Nope. Little guy. Little guy is right. Right in the corner of the mouth. That's perfect. Thank you. Go. Strike Master introduces the new Lithium 40 Volt. Everything you've ever wanted in an ice auger. With a 40% increase in cutting speed over the competition and up to 100 holes per charge, the Lithium 40 Volt has the power and stamina you need and the two amp rapid charger that can bring a fully discharged 40 volt battery pack to a full charge in as little as two and a half hours. The new Lithium 40 Volt, only from Strike Master. Otter, the leader in quality and innovation, is opening doors with the release of the all new Crossover Series Ice Shelters. All crossover shelters convert from traditional front door entry to convenient side door entry and back again in seconds. Otter, the toughest, strongest, smartest, and now most versatile shelter on ice. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, Ice Fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. Ideal for all species, iFish Pro is an innovative fishing system that allows an angler to use their favorite rod and reel instead of trying to manage the fish hand over hand. Oh, right Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip up fishing. Look at that. Find oh, iFish Pro go. online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. These fish are notorious for like on a slow bite like here, hangers. Yeah. It'd be hangers on on the uh, on the iFish Pros, and even when they bite, these two bites they have had, I'm jigging, and there's just weight there while I'm jigging. They just come up and glom onto it. Nope. Yep. Well, river fish never seem to have a shortage of food. No. Oh, there you go. I think I'm just going to go live by the Sci Fish Pro. <laughs> there he is. Ish? Nope. Just a little guy. Oh, there he is. Ran at me. No. Look at this. Oh, what nice. What the heck? <laughs> What's that doing here? I don't know. It's a funny looking brown fish. You got to love rivers, folks. Yeah. You just don't know what you're going to catch. I thought he lost him. He just ran at the hole. Ran right at the hole. I and mean, that is the crazy part. You just don't know what you're going to catch out here. My next fish is going to be a red horse. How about that? <laughs> I caught a catfish last night. Did you? Yes. Why not? <laughs> just a little small mouth. Later, dude. Going to have to tally up how many different species. Yeah. Guiding on pool four in the spring, mm -hmm. fishing ringworms. Just as the water started to rise each spring, there'd be about a week time period where you'd get these buffalo. Oh yeah. These gigantic yeah. they hit those ringworms like a walleye. <laughs> I mean you'd be on the you'd be fighting one, you'd be on the phone to the taxidermy guy. Yeah. Get, get it get it ready. Here it comes. <laughs> and it's a big it's a you know big buffalo. Yeah. I've battled a few of them myself. Uh, we 
we get a good right. buffalo oh, run up geez. this river. Oh, there you go. Get him. All right. There he is. Well, you bring me. Feels like a decent. Ooh, ooh, there's, there's, there's a nice, nice auger. auger. <laughs> Not quite as colorful as PJ's, but a really nice fish. <laughs> and kind of upset with me. Yeah, <laughs> he's a little, he's looking a little flared up there. They don't get much of a chance, you know. I mean, it's ten seconds to to over with. Right. Yeah, three and a half feet of water. You, things go pretty quick. So I'm going to show you how to spot a sauger. Now, as far as table fare is concerned, tastes just like a walleye. You clean this fish, put this fillet next to a walleye fillet the same size, you cannot tell the difference. But you come take a look at the fish. And what you've got is you've got these heavy spots on the dorsal fin here. And then one of the things you'll notice is there's a distinct absence of that heavy white tail. I mean, this one's just got like the little tiniest little line of white. Really is a dead giveaway though up here with the spots in the dorsal fin. All right, see you later. <coughs> Goodbye. It has been a long time since I fished a river intentionally for sauger back in my guide days. We'd uh, have a lot of fun with them on pool four. Uh, of course, you catch sauger accidentally once in a while on some of the, the lakes in northern Minnesota, like Lake of the Woods, but uh, they're never very big. That's a, that's a nice sauger. And one of the things that's really nice about these uh, saugers on these rivers is, you know, occasionally you'll get a 22 to 24 inch sauger and they get real girthy. Uh, so, you know, compared to a, a lake walleye, they're a really cool fish. You just don't get much of a chance to target them. And uh, what I love about them is just how aggressive they are. You'll see it on the jigging rods, how hard they hit the baits, and then how aggressive they are when they, when they grab one of these shiners. It almost seems like a pike strike. I mean, you just watch the line just peel off the, the rod and reel. So a pretty cool fish. That, you know, I think this is the first time here at In-Depth Outdoors in 13 years that we've ever targeted them on purpose. In-Depth Outdoors, Spot on the Spot ID. On today's Spot on the Spot ID, one of our biggest challenges in communicating the uh, location that we fished is finding a map for the body of water we fished. These really small rivers in southern Wisconsin aren't mapped by anyone. So what we've had to do is I uh, took a look at my Fish Smart app on my uh, cell phone and found that I had a copy of the map for Pool 4. Well, lo and behold, you do a little looking, I found a stretch of Pool 4, that's the Mississippi River down near Wabasha, that's a lot like the area we fish. So uh, this is the main channel, this is the barge channel on the Mississippi River, lots of current, rarely if ever ice is over, you're gonna have fish wintering in deeper holes on the main river. Now, the scenario we saw was in periods of low light, early and late in the day, fish would move from the main channel up into the shallow connected bay. And what these fish were doing there is they were targeting young of the year panfish, bluegills and crappies. Now most years, you just wouldn't have enough depth in these shallow side bays to pull these walleyes and saugers up to feed. You know, uh, right now the rivers in southern Wisconsin are incredibly high uh, following a year of very consistent above average rainfall. So it's created a scenario that has been overlooked by anglers because they haven't had high water like this in a number of years. Lo and behold, PJ goes to check it, the fish are there waiting. I can just about guarantee you there's a small river near your house in the area that you fish that chances are you target, or you know, anglers in the area target for early season walleyes and saugers. And then for the rest of the year, they basically forget about it. So keep this general pattern in mind. Uh, a lot of rivers don't freeze well enough to fish them in the winter, but if you look for these shallow attached bays with enough depth, uh, you're gonna be very surprised at the number of game fish that will come up shallow to feed, and they can be ripe for the taking if you're one of the anglers willing to go out and do a little experimenting with the areas you fish. Shuttle only from Markham Technologies. Okuma Fishing Tackle offers a complete lineup of reels for the die-hard ice angler. The Okuma Samar 10 and Inspira 20 are a perfect match with your favorite panfish or walleye ice fishing rod. 
both feature a long stem handle that fits comfortably in a gloved hand. Cyclonic Flow Rotor technology that throws water off the reel to minimize ice buildup. And a drag system optimized for use in extreme conditions. Everywhere, every day, every fish. Okuma Fishing Tackle is inspired fishing. At Aluma, we make the longest lasting, most dependable enclosed trailers on the road today. By building quality, our competition just can't match. Our all aluminum construction gives you a heavy duty but lightweight trailer that can handle your tough hauls. Aluma trailers are engineered for ease of use with you in mind. All backed by our unbeatable five year warranty. Work or play, get there with Aluma. We're in it for the long haul. Deuce is wild, buddy. Deuces? Well, if you're not gonna hit my jigging wrap, go pick a shiner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go you're get surrounded it. by him. <laughs> there he is. There. <laughs> Whip that out there like a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> a fishing ninja over here. Come here, you. Wait a minute, I thought they were supposed to be aggressive. That guy just eyeballed it. When he decided to finally eat it, that's the downside of river fish. There's so much food. That's a pretty one. See you later. I think I'm gonna go with the shiner head. I had a fat head head on there for the longest yeah. time and it was not as effective, I don't think. They definitely show a preference towards them uh, lake shiners. Get rid of that. Just a little meat, a little flavor. It's a number three jig and wrap. That's that uh, orange, fluorescent orange. Good river color. And that little fish had no chance because, you know, we're really, I'm going to get right down to it. We've got about that much line out. Very shallow. Like, I wouldn't even think sometimes that there'd be, you know, this many fish back here in such shallow water. Yeah, the fish are where the food is, and, and that's what they're doing. They're coming up here chasing food. You got a flag up. Yes, I do. Get them. Oh, yeah. Pretty nice. decent one. Good, good. They got such cool colors. We had a little bit of a, I wouldn't call it slow no, patch, but uh, the fish we were catching were a little smaller. This one's a little bit nicer, but I guess that's gonna come with the territory. You know, one of the things that I'm definitely concerned about today is, and this is something that I've learned over time, you know, doing the TV show now for about 13 years. I'm gonna fire that guy back. Cool little sauger, back in a hole. But what we got coming is the first major cold front of the year. And, uh, you know, I've learned from experience that, you know, you get these uh, stretches of warm, stable weather like we've had throughout December. One of the most difficult bite periods that we experience each year is that first Arctic blast that'll show up and really change things. And uh, what it would typically do is these real shallow water bites, as you get those temperatures that are you know below zero, uh, the ice thickness back here will really start to pile up and these fish will move out of these really shallow areas. And it's not just specific to this pattern. You'll see the same thing in the natural lakes back in Minnesota. Uh, there's still some very good shallow water weed line bites taking place that uh, first real major Arctic dip shows up. You start to really pile up the ice, start to see a lot more trucks and vehicles out on the ice as well. And those fish that were up in the shallows, they completely vacate and then they move out to deeper water. So that's uh, a time period that I really wanna try to work around each year and that's what's coming. Uh, today is the 30th of December. So tomorrow is New Year's Eve. And uh, on Tuesday, we have that first major Arctic slam coming. So definitely wanted to get out with PJ, uh, get on these fish in advance of that front coming, because I do expect once it rolls in, the bite's gonna get really tough. 
James, you got a tip up. Yes, I do. Oh. It's always the farthest one. Uh, he's still going. What we got, what we got, what we got? Doesn't feel huge. Come on, you. Come on now. There we go. Kissing cousin to the last one. Yes. That was on the rosy red too, I believe. It was worth the run. Yep. The scale patterns and the colors, there's more pinks and there's more, you know, oranges, where a wally will be more gold and green. So unique. Yet they're so similar. That little treble hook is right in the corner of his mouth. What we're using today is we're using some really small treble hooks. And I really like to use the uh, sure set trebles. Use those a lot when I'm fishing larger bait. But those uh, sure set trebles, when we're fishing these really delicate shiners like this, it's too much hook for a bait that, uh, that fine, that small. So fire that fish back. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. features not found on any other underwater viewing system, the Quest HD from Markham Technologies offers a vivid 7-inch widescreen display, Sony camera, and the ability to send video to a TV over HDMI in full 1080p. The Quest HD offers on-screen display of direction, temperature, and depth. This season, get your eyes below the ice and see what you've been missing on the big screen with a Quest HD underwater viewing system from Markham Technologies. Yeah, feels pretty decent. Bobber stop. All right. Come Ooh. on up. Oh, Ooh, walleye. nice walleye. Yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. You said it could happen. Yep. Bonus. Yes, sir. A little bit of everything today. Oop, right in the corner of the maw. And that was on your rosy red again. Yeah. Tell me again why they don't sell yeah. those in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> A nice chunky fish. Upper teens. Might get close to that 20 inch mark. Doesn't matter. Going back. See you later, fish. Mm. Hopefully we get some more of those, huh? Yeah, that'd be great. There he is. Oh yeah, that's a decent one. Ooh, Come on up. Nice auger. Oh, PJ. Choked. <laughs> <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Three foot of water, midday. Got a front coming in. It's gonna energize these fish up real nice. See you later. Ooh. Oop, there it goes. It's yours, Peach. All right. We got him. Ooh. 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 About another one of them 15 inches or so. Rosy red? Rosy red, yes. All right. Thank you, buddy. We got a little rain, we got a little bite. Yeah, midday. Low, we haven't had a... Line's caught down here on the bottom of the ice. Got it. Maybe. There we go. Yeah, it was caught on this side, the fish is going that way. Oh, dang. That's a heavy fish. What you got? That's a, oh, good, a big ooh. pike. Oh, nice. Uh, this isn't done yet. No, no. <laughs> He's not done. He just figured out that there were some, some <laughs> shenanigans going on. That's crazy. Species number six for the day. Don't it, count the chicken <laughs> yet, man. It's a fatty. Yeah, it is. Nice fat fish. Well, the weather person turned out to be right. The rain showed up. Yeah, it did. 
I'm hoping they're right about just dropping a few uh, degrees so we go from rain to snow. Oh, that's a fatty. It's so fat I can't, there's nothing, <laughs> right, I expected the gill plates to just kind of pop out and there was nothing to grab to. There you oh, go. Yeah. Oh, how nice. About that? Yeah. That's well, nice. that'll scare some small soggers. Nice fish. Yeah, yes, it is. Right. <laughs> some of them smaller ones could be food. Right. We got yeah. lucky to yeah. keep that, one, that little hook, and two, not have this fish bite us off. Yeah. Perfect hook placement. Not bad at all. Boop. Oops. Off you go. Nice. Good deal. Boy, if you stuck Man. a 40 incher in here, it'd be some that, heft. Yeah, that, that's got a belly on it. Huh. Nice. Uh, species number six. Number six. Not bad. Y your pike is much more impressive than your catfish was. <laughs> yeah, much better. <laughs> <laughs> I'd take this over that any day. <laughs> I'll grab uh, rosy red. Yeah, this was a rosy red again. Yep. Let's bend the ticket. And you want to know why this flag went up? Because the last time you caught one over there, I took the middle bucket and moved it over by that <laughs> hole. Now you got to bring it back. <laughs> Slimy. I got the slammage on there. <laughs> like a decent one. What a 15, 16 incher. The conditions are really changing out here. We uh, went from rain and it turned to heavy snow. There you go. There you go, bud. Awesome. So that brings us to the end of today's show. Had a lot of fun targeting saugers here for the very first time at In-Depth Outdoors and Mother Nature definitely made it tough for us second half of the day. Anytime you get rain like that, wet, heavy snowfall, it's tough on the fisherman, but even harder on the camera guy. He did a great job today keeping the equipment safe without missing a beat. So before we go, huge shout out to PJ Vic. You know, Southern Wisconsin, a lot of people live in that part of the country and there's a lot of ice fishing pressure, yet he's still always able to find these really unique bites that are just overlooked by the masses. So PJ, can't wait to fish with you again in the very near future. Now, before we go, don't forget, go to our homepage, indepthoutdoors.com, and get yourself registered for the Dream Trip Giveaway for your chance to fish and film an episode of In-Depth Outdoors with the crew here. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In-Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.